The Kingfisher does the RNA extraction, and then we have the Quant Studio 5, which is our PCR machine that does the detection of the virus. What's PCR? A polymerase chain reaction. It's how we uh, test for disease. So these are mosquito And so being able to have this capability here in our laboratory, we have that 48 hour turnaround time. We bring those mosquitoes from the field back to the laboratory, have disease information within 48 hours, and we can have an aircraft up in the air that night. Um, versus if we sent that information to the state or we sent those mosquitoes to the state, we're waiting two weeks, we're waiting six weeks. I've waited as long as eight weeks before. Um, so having this here, we have actionable decisions, actionable data. What kind, of, what kind of pesticides do you use? Um, we use two types of uh, material pesticides for adulticide, uh, pyrethroids and organophosphates, and then for larvicides we're using uh, BTI. What's BTI? Uh, Bacillus thuringiensis israeliensis. It's a, uh, a bacterial uh, bacterium. Uh -huh. yeah. Is that those like mosquito dunks that you put in your... Yeah, mosquito dunks and mosquito bits. You can purchase that at like, you know, Walmart or uh, Home Depot. Um, but there's other types of products that we can use that are like, ex you know, specific to maybe a mangrove area or a, a grassy land. Um, many of the products that we use though are readily available to purchase. Operations. Yes, sir. Good morning. And obviously you guys are the operators. Yep. Oh, Dispatcher? Yeah. Nope. This is Nate, Director of uh, Operations. Good morning. Nate's the Director of Operations. Yep. For the Collier County Mosquito Control? Collier Mosquito. Collier Mosquito. Yeah. Collier Mosquito. Yes. I hear they got some big ones here. We do. I hear you. Go. So these are fish that eat mosquitoes? Oh, um, most of the action's going to be in this other tank right over here. This is the draw out tank, so they're small. And, but if you want to take some good footage. And what do they do with these? Uh, we are. They make them. We make them available to the public to come pick up and put in their yard. And they eat mosquitoes when you put them in a pond or something like that. Pond, flooded yard, ditch. Some people use them for livestock troughs. We think I'm feeding them. Uh, did they get much bigger than this? Um, no more than two inches. They're, they're they stay small. They're kind of like guppies. They their live bears too. So these are our breeding baskets. Morning, how are you? How you doing? Yeah, feel free to come on in and take a closer look if you like. Yeah, uh, what kind of drone is this? This is a uh, Matrice, is what it's called. Matrice? Matrice, this is a great drone for us. And what you got in there, a, like a spray tank? Yeah, so this is a hopper we use to dispense material um, for treating juvenile mosquitoes, um, also called larviciding. So the cool thing about these drones is that we can uh, pre-program them mm -hmm. to do a certain route. Um, and then, you know, essentially it's sort of uh, takes care of itself. We're there to monitor and make sure it does what it needs to. Just, uh, it's autonomous, so it just does, you, you have a, what do you have, a map on a screen, and then you have it fly the map, or you put that? Yes, sir, yeah, it's yeah. software-based. Um, there's navigation built in, so it's very cool. If you like, you can also take it, one of his other drones. This is a Skydio, one of our smaller mapping drones that we'll use to look at certain areas. It's got a um, camera built in. Yes, sir. The cool thing about this drone is that it's very easy to deploy and mm -hmm. get out. So even a technician who needs to look at, say, a swamp or a certain area, they can use this drone. And, and does that camera pan and tilt? Or is yes. It, yeah. So it has a, you know, there's a lot of features with this camera. It can, it can track, it can follow. Mm -hmm. um, it can obviously be flown manually and sort of mm -hmm. um, lock on to targets as well. Yeah, so, and this looks more like what I have. A, uh, I have a Phantom DJI 3. Oh, Phantom yeah. 3. Yeah, it's this a, is a little uh, bit bigger. This is a splash that, drone. The cool thing about this drone is that it's actually capable of landing on the water and going in the water column. Oh, really? And take photos and video. Of, take a dip. Yes, sir. And you can actually, you know, uh, see the larvae. larvae. See like the in larvae the in there. Yes, sir. That's a pretty accurate camera to get that small. Yeah, it's you know it's it's a great tool for us to have. Um, is this uh, this is German made drone? Oh, okay. Uh, the cool thing about this drone is that uh, it can take off vertically, so we can actually launch it from otherwise. anywhere. Yeah, essentially anywhere. Um, and we use this to get imagery of large areas in our district. Uh, the cool thing about it is that you can uh, have different payloads for the type of imagery you want to take. How high do you go with that? So by the FAA, we only go you know. 
as, as high as uh, 500, 400 feet. 400 feet. 400 feet. Uh, typically with this though, depending on the imagery we're taking, uh, there's a suggested range for you know high resolution for doing ultra mosaic imagery. Uh, I want to say 250, oh, so, 300. So that, that has a camera that transmit back to you or does it, you capture the video and then have a SD card? Uh, so with this drone, we can see it, it's transmitted back to the controller. So it has a, it have, would have to have a, a digital video transmitter and you'd have to have a receiver. Yes, so essentially this drone, uh, you know, when it's taking imagery, we can see where it's at, which mm -hmm. is the controller. Um, but everything is between the controller and the drone. Nothing is like networked or anything. It's all just between that. Um, and again, given the uh, amount of data we're collecting, we still have to transfer that data over to do analysis. Okay, that's... Um, you know, this is we'll go, we'll uh, put in the GPS navigation in the drone itself. It'll fly itself, it'll take imagery, and then we can find more mosquitoes around. Put about 100 gallons of a BTI, which is a natural bacteria. It goes through the product and it shows, throws a mist. And basically what that helps us to do is fight the battle on the larvae side behind bones or any areas that we cannot get to with our trucks. You have to be uh, careful with the wind. Yeah. Winds, weather, will minimize our missions depending on on that. And that's all done through our operations department. They're the ones that decide when we go out. How often? Oh, so they have a... It, it's all it's data driven. Data, data so driven. it's not a regular thing. No, sir. It's, it's a da data driven. Uh, technicians will go out and give numbers and data to the operations department. And then they're the ones that'll go ahead and decide when we set up. When an application 